Hello, my friends over at FaceToFaceGames.com. This is Travis Simulan Sowers, and we are jumping into a best of three traditional midnight hunt draft on MTG Arena. I hope things are going well in your world, and that you'll stop by Face to Face Games for all of your gaming needs. You're a nerd, you need nerd stuff, they got nerd stuff. Buy it from them. It's cool. We're getting kind of towards the end of Midnight Hunt, and it's been a wild ride. I feel like this, this format has been really good at evoking feelings from people. You feel something when you play Midnight Hunt. It might be frustration, it might be rage, it might be joy, it might be excitement, uh, but you're gonna feel something playing this set. And right now I feel like we should probably take this Augur of Autumn. There are people out there who would tell you that Oregon Hoarder is better than Augur of Autumn. I'm wondering if they're right. I suppose if you think you can keep it in play for two turns, the auger is probably better. The double green is a challenge. God, they're probably not that far off. That's how good the Oregon order is. Because the auger of autumn doesn't really block anything meaningful. And the double green means it's a little difficult to get down in a timely fashion. But I still like the promise that the auger has. Uh, so we're, we're going to go with that. Uh, and we're going to immediately regret it and take the Scab Wrangler, I think. This card has super impressed me. No reason I can't be green-blue. And you can play this in green-blue. It's just way better in blue-black, where you've got like a, a train of bodies coming through. I, I don't think I want to start jamming farmers just because we first picked the Augur. We need to figure out what's open. And to do that... We essentially need to take the best card out of the first five packs and then see where we're at. And I think the Scab Wrangler is pretty obviously the best card here. Now we've got a bit of a conundrum. I don't hate the Tome, but I, I found that you don't really need it. There's better ways to get card advantage. Yeah, there's kind of not a card here that I think is worth third picking which means we may take the Siege Zombie just in case we end up in blue-black. This is a pretty underwhelming pack. I think I could see an argument for the Witch, uh, for the Tome, for the Immolation, for the Trapper, maybe even the Farmer, uh, but I'm just going to try to get a playable here, and if we end up in black, we'll be happy to have the Siege Zombie. If we don't, no one's going to get anything meaningful from that pack. All right. I'm not quite getting any signals yet, but Falcon Abomination and Scob Wrangler, while not the world's best combo, are a combo. One of the challenges is you can think that blue is open when it isn't, because blue is incredibly deep in this format. Usually there's a couple cards in each color that you're like, these aren't very good and they're not going to make your main deck. There's really nothing like that in blue. All of the blue commons are just fine. All right, so we should be seeing something here that we're like, why is it still here? And it, it's kind of a decision now between the Shadow Beast Siding and the Festival Crasher. We could try to go into blue-red spells, but that doesn't work really well with something like Scob Wrangler. Doesn't mean we have to play the Scob Wrangler. I also don't like Arcane Infusion a lot. I, I think I like the Shadow Beast Siding, and we're going to try to go for value. So let's see if that goes anywhere. May change up a little bit here. Uh, this card is not amazing, but it's also not bad. I think if we take the flip to switch, we might be forcing blue a little bit. Let's continue to stay open and take the Scoundrel. I've got good cards spread out over three colors. If I can continue picking things within those colors, we can solidify which one we actually want to play in time. And it'll probably come down to where we find removal. Like, opening a Defenestrate uh, might lead us towards wanting to play black. Bird Admirer, I usually like having one copy of. Duel for Dominance has some problems in calling it actual removal, uh, but it, it's not something I mind including in a deck. Okay. It looks like we may be heading to green for playables, uh, but since I don't really have any removal yet, I want to go ahead and grab this, this Bolt. I feel like this is sort of starting us down a path that I can get comfortable with. I've got 
a removal spell and a half, and two solid creatures, one of which has some value stapled to it. And if you're looking at this screaming that I should have taken the Oregon Hoarder, uh, you're not that far off. The card's really good. It, 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 sometimes I'll struggle to think of what you should take over an Oregon Hoarder. Because there's not a lot. I have a theory that uh, they stopped doing playtesting for Limited uh, when COVID hit and they were having to work remotely. And it mostly was okay until you get to this set. Uh, Cause like, blue's way too good. I have played Defend the Celestis before. I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite card ever, but it it's one that you can work with. You kind of have to side it out after game one because they're never going to walk into it again. And you can play around this if you have a life total. All right, I did say I liked one bird admirer, and I meant that. I do like one bird admirer. So let's admire that bird. Observer's fine, but no one's excited about the Observer. No one's really excited about Broodweaver either, uh, but I think it's probably worth a snap here at, at, at 11th. It, it blocks a lot of the flyers in the format, so we should have a strong anti-air game. And I do like one Return to Nature in the size board. So we're, we're kind of in a spot now where we can... That's a late flip the switch. We can kind of get into green anything. Like, it's not incredibly unreasonable to take the Sigarda and see if that comes together. Because, like, I'll certainly play the blue, and we've got some decent blue cards. And the Scott Wrangler would even play nicely uh, with some of the green token producers we have. But if white's remotely open, we get to play a Mythic Angel. And if it's not, like, I can live without the Nibblegast. Because I think I could make an argument that you should take the Liberator if this wasn't here. Uh, but I'll give this a go and put it in the maybe pile. Some green two drops would go a long way towards making me feel more comfortable about what we're doing. Oh, we don't have them yet. I'm going to take another Shadow Beast sighting. I think I would like two of these. It's a solid body. And I'm not going into another color yet. It's another Defend the Celestis, which is interesting. Flip the switch. I think Sifters is secretly a white-blue card. So not something I really want here. I think I'm going to take the... Uh, do I want the Commando or the Witch? I, I really like both of these. I think I like the first Witch a little more than the first Commando, especially if we can get Coven going. We may be moving a lot towards white here. Yeah, the blue's drying up. I'm not seeing any good black. And we're getting decent bodies for white. So sure, let's uh, let's let's say this is what we're doing for now. And we can always pull this other stuff back in if we decide we'd like to go in that direction. Wow, there's a defenestrate. Okay, talk to me. That can be splashed. Like, I don't need much to be interested in white. But I need something. It's not a question of is Sigarda better than these cards. She clearly is. It's a question of is Sigarda better than these cards plus the rest of the black we're going to get if we're getting Defenestrates that late. And the answer may be no. It also may be yes. I don't know yet. We're going to find out together. Okay, that took a turn I really wasn't expecting, but I'm certainly down for it uh, with this Eaten Alive. I feel like we get good removal. I got card advantage. I got all the four drops we'll ever need. Let's party. A common trap I see people fall into is thinking that a color is open or that they should be drafting a color because they have one or two good cards in it when they may just be cards that they opened and got passed very early and then things dried up. 
This isn't, well, I was going to say it's an interesting one because I, I really do like the Cather Commander, Commando, but we're out of white, so. Significantly less interesting. Let's get us a Sentry. And at 13 playables, we just need to drill down a little bit more and we'll be fine. I like the removal suite. This is good. And I, I do feel that Duel for Dominance is going to do some work with the Shadow Beast siding. That's good, too. Here we go. Getting all the critters we need. Don't mind the Siege Zombies. I, I don't really think we need the Timberland Guide. But if we end up in like any sort of board stall, we're going to need two drops. And two drops that can clonk in for a little damage is not bad. That's a nice spin. Uncommon for our color pair, I like. And spinning the farmer ain't bad either. We got a couple Shadow Beast sightings we could mill. Not a whole lot else. Uh, but this is basically the green organ hoarder. So, not unhappy with that. Here's a little bit of card draw if we need it. And currently, I might want it. It's free siege zombie day. Interesting. We still got a pack left. Man, this thing's really good. It's kind of a shame we're not going to get to take that. I think it's eaten alive for us. And I don't think we're unhappy about that. Like, two premium removal spells is not a bad thing. This is still in my maybe pile. I'm not sure about playing the Blood Pact, but there's a decent chance I will. One thing we don't have a lot of is card advantage here. We're kind of getting it off of the Shadow Beast siding and the Augur of Autumn. And I, I, I like if I can, to try to have two ways to draw cards, especially in a format that just doesn't have anything to do after four or five lands. Like, there's just not really any five or six drops in this format. So, like, Shadow Beast Siding, sure, is what we'll do if we flood out, is cast it again, but that's rarely incredibly impressive. Whew, this is a rough one. Because that Castaway is probably the best card in the pack, but it is just not for us. There's a, a mild chance this deck would just play a Jack-O-Lantern. Because I do have some double greens, and I want black and green early. So, like, it might just play it not to splash anything, but just literally to fix for itself. Because I'm not seeing anything else here that I think I'd play. I, I guess if we got a lot of sacrifice shenanigans, I might be able to play a Novice Occultist. So I, I think I'll take that just in case we see a couple of the Sacrifice Duders. This is an interesting one. The fact that I got the Ghoul so late makes me think I could probably wheel this. And we just take the Ambush, see if this wheels, and if it does, we're thrilled. And if it doesn't, it's okay. It's not like we're reanimating anything busted with this dag. The other option would be to try to splash the counterpart. Yeah, I don't really have any great targets for that. Even the Augur's questionable. So let's get us a Midnight Ambush and see if that uh, Rebirth wheels. Maybe by the time it comes back, we'll have something to do with it. This one is missing some pieces for us significantly. I'm going to take another Silver Bolt and probably sideboard it. Bring it in if we are up against a Werewolf Stag. Shady Traveler is not my favorite card, but we're a little short creatures. This would put us up to 14. I guess it, if I'm not playing the Occultist. So not my favorite card, but we just need a couple bodies now. Hobbling Zombie can get some work done. Yeah, if this is the deck, I think I can work with it. I don't need another Siege Zombie. I probably am still running this Blood Pact. Like, there's not a world where I need another Siege Zombie, right? We're, we're good. I, I guess if I just have to play a Pestilent Wolf and have oh, kind of overloaded on two drops, that's fine, too. Don't really need any of this. That's a late drown. Maybe we were supposed to be in blue. Because green kind of dried up. I feel like we got everything we needed out of black, though.
Do I want to like sideboard the Broodweaver and play the other Traveler main? I, I think I might, and then bring this in if we're up against somebody that has good flyers. Because this puts us at 15 creatures counting the Shadow Beast sighting, which I, I think is a pretty decent amount. Huh. Okay, sure. I'll take a free rare. I, I don't think, given that we already have the Broodweaver, I don't think I need another Bird Admirer. Eh, well, there's there's actually a chance I would bring this in against a very flyer-heavy deck. So I am going to take it. I'm always a big fan of taking a card you'll play over one that you wouldn't. I didn't get the feeling, I got the feeling that like blue was open-ish. I didn't really get the feeling that red was. So what are we going to reanimate with this that matters is my concern. It's need to mill it with the farmer. But I don't think we even have anything that we could reanimate. Okay, maybe red was incredibly open. I guess the fact that it's just value is pretty good. Like, we could mill it, we could draw it. I'd have to find room for it. I suspect it might be better than Defend the Celestis on its own, but I kind of do dig the idea of one combat trick in the deck. There's an argument to play 16 lands. We do not have a high curve at all. I don't usually do that. I could also pretty happily cut one of the two drops and just move along with my life. Like, this still gives us 15 creatures. Well, 14. But if you count this, it's 15. And that seems close to me. And Evolving Wilds would have gone a long way in this stack. But I think I can work with this. I think I can work with this. Let's get Wither Bloomin, y'all. Alright, let's see if we got anything here. Took a little break. So I could run and grab a beverage. We would like to play first. And this hand's got a curve. I like it. It's really good when you're on the play. Silver Bowl. Presumably we'll go Traveler into Farmer, but we will see. Yeah, I think I like that plan. I mean, we may just go Shadow Beast siding and work this in lighter. That's fine. What you gonna do about a 4-4? Four, four? Not to mention a 3-mana three 3-5 three here in a minute. Key. It's a lot of silver bolts. Not quite a two for one if they do it like this, is it? Admired him, birds. Okay, so they are indeed a two color deck. Silver bolts are pretty good against us. And that kind of makes sense. You don't see this a lot outside of black-white and sometimes uh, black-blue. But like green and red decks are rarely very interested in that. It plays nicely with the uh, one drop that sacrifices a creature to turn into a 4-4. Four -four. Uh, but it, I feel like white has a lot more sacrifice shenanigans going on. Where you can get like Flesh Taker, which is just some of the creepiest card art on the planet. 
So next turn would be the Shadow Beast siding. So this turn needs to be this dude. Hitting Diagraph Rebirth is pretty cool. Like, that'll come in handy. We don't really have anything to bring back other than the Traveler, but I'll bring it back. Okay, maybe I won't bring it back. All right, we'll do this the old fashioned way. With siege zombie pings. Casually gobbling up my flashback card. Don't care for it. Not that it was going to do much. It was going to be like a five-man... See? There's the flesh taker. They've got some pieces for this. Like, it was basically just going to flashback a two, three minutes, but still, I would have liked to have had it. Green seems like a reasonable choice. They just eat in my graveyard, huh? Get protection from this. Pew! Colorless is not a color. So it's unlikely we're going to kill him with siege zombie pings. But. This feels stable-ish, and we still get to draw more cards. I'm trying to run out as many lands as I can, because we could draw card draw into stuff. Like, we've still got the Augur. Uh, if we top deck the Augur, we've got Coven enabled. So we could just play lands and creatures off the top of our deck. And we do have a, a little bit of pressure still going here. Not a lot, but a little. They've got a slight bit of card advantage going. And we got a slight bit of nothing going. So, like, if I attack with the 4-4, uh, four, four, they could block it with the Flesh Taker and double trade, but they're more likely to just block it with the Silversmith and the Sanctifier. And that doesn't seem great to me. So I, I think we're just stalled, and we're looking for that Augur to flood the board. Ideally. It doesn't really change a lot. Who's a cute fox thing? You're a cute fox thing. Borrowed time. Okay. They're going to grab the 4 4, I reckon? Because things get interesting. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. I think I can tap these in response because I still get to block with the other dude. But it does leave us somewhat unable to attack. They're going to love this. Whee! Siege zombies! Oh, mini. Lance. I 
know that that moves the needle fast enough. They might should be attacking me with that flesh taker. Because they're going to have to start sacrificing crap soon just to stay alive. Oh, now that's interesting. Uh, we may make a blood pact with our buddy here. Because they don't know it, but they need to kill me this turn. Or I'm going to let them draw some cards. Well, I guess that's not entirely true. Yeah, I, I can't kill them with this. As long as that flesh taker's there. So, realistically, I need to blood pack myself end of turn. Because if I do this to them, they're just going to start sacrificing stuff and gaining one and scrying. And I could just draw removal spells and get them. Like this Defenestrate. Stay in at three. A bold choice, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for them. There we go. So, it was mostly a kill with Blood Pact, if you think about it. So the Silver Bolts are really good against us. They're not likely to take them out. Interestingly, a Silver Bolt from us does appear to kill most of what they're playing, including some particularly annoying things. So I might want to bring in my own Silver Bolt. Uh, they've got a much better value proposition than me. And you, you might think that we could fix that with something like Crawl from the Cellar, but they have a card that just incidentally hoses our graveyard. Uh, and there might be a Diagraph Ghoul in there too, so I, I don't really want to go ham on the graveyard stuff against them. I'm considering cutting the Rebirth and one of the Flyers and bringing in a Silver Bolt. And I'd like another threat, but I don't really have one. I suppose we could talk about Return to Nature. Yeah, I could play a Return to Nature here. I could hit Borrowed Time, and under the right circumstances, we could even snipe a Silver Bolt. So I think I like here and here, and I think I don't like this. And I don't really feel like I need the Bird Admirer. Yeah, I don't feel like I need the Bird Admirer. Although this is, yeah, I could cut one of these two, I guess. One, two, three, four, two drops. I mean, given what we've seen, I suspect we'd rather have the Siege Zombie than that. So we'll just bump this up to three. And I, I just didn't see any flyers from them. Let's run it back. And this hand is basically like, do you have a kill spell for my auger? It's even less likely to hit lands. I, I think we still try this, but with the understanding that, like, I'm going to need to draw relatively well or we're just going to lose this game. The Augur is a very powerful card. I, I don't know that it's powerful enough to dig me out of all of this. But I am interested in finding out. Like, a hand of lands with card draw isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. See, this technically gives us a chance to bop that Silver Bolt if we need to. I don't think I need to right now. But I could. This isn't exactly what I want to do, but let's be a grown up and take some power off the board. I 
really wanted that auger to stack. That may not have been a great idea because we knew they were their deck stuffed with silver bolts. I'm wondering about just getting our value and returning to nature that silver bolt, and I, I think that may be the call here. Still kind of awkward to have gone through all of our card draw. I have six lands in play and another three in hand. I was going to say, it, it makes you think, well, we're probably not going to draw any more lands, right? But the math doesn't quite work out to that. We could still draw a lot of lands. There's seven left in the deck out of 24 cards, so we're still going to hit a, a, a non-zero amount of lands. They want me to trade this for their commando, I guess, or they'd have tapped it into turn. What? I'd really rather use the Midnight Ambush on their rare, but yeah, I've got so much mana, I don't have to make those decisions yet, but we're gonna have to make them soon. All right, fine. I'll fire it off. It's not great. <laughs> I deserve this. I should have mulled that hand. I should have mulled that hand. Well, that's thinking based on what we knew we would draw from there. But it was not an impressive opener. I think that's fair to say. Let's get shady. And continue to hit all these land drops, because that's important. And you're probably learning from this video a new concept, uh, which is that sometimes if a player draws twice as many lands as the other, they are disadvantaged in the game of Magic. Other times, Shadow Beast Siding is like, what's up, I got your back, dog. You're not quite dead. But you don't really ever want to get to the point where you're casting and flashing back Shadow Beast Sighting in the same turn. It's bad good news. Kind of need to top deck another one just to not be dead. Good news, there's one in the deck. I was going to say, they should definitely send with the team here. Because uh, I'm, I'm required to block the Flesh Taker. This is not once per turn, right? Let's just check. Yeah, I have to block this. It will kill me. They like their top card. That's not good news. So, like, a Defenestrate and we're still playing, at least. That's nice, or would be nice. Sun Gold Sentinel is not helping our chances here. But again, we're at 12 lands. It kind of is what it is. I put way too much uh, stress on the shoulders of that Augur. I 
I want them to know how many lands I drew. Tell Cersei. I want her to know that it was me. This puddle looks a bit like a cow to me. These are the ears, and then you've got the cow snout. It's kind of like at an angle. Once you see it in this mud puddle that it's a cow, you kind of can't unsee it. Okay, there's a Ritual of Hope in their deck. That is really good to know. And, uh... Sure. Why wouldn't we have one more land? 13 lands. Yeah! We didn't draw that poorly. This is a little bit painful, but I feel like we've been in garbage time almost as soon as they killed the auger. But it's just not within me to scoop them up, you know? I can't I I can't do that. <laughs> oh wow. Double dreadhound. I think we might be in danger. Now everything's going to be fine. Except for that. It's a lot of triggers. But we won't get to see them all because we're dead. Alright, so there's some stuff we can play around here. I'm wondering if I can get some... Well, we've already got the Defend the Celestis in here. Still no real air force. That's not the problem. I mean, the problem with that hand was just too many lands. I do think I'm down with the return to nature. I don't hate that. They didn't really have enough graveyard crap going on that I want a rotten reunion. Because like once it's in there, it's in there. We just need to deal with this stuff. So I think this is likely our best configuration. It's not crazy to keep the rebirth in here. But it, it's also not a deck that's like super excited to play the rebirth. I could do it and cut a land, but I don't want to do that on the play. I, I might should have done that on the draw. Because as you can see, flooding out is pretty brutal in this format, but frankly, so is missing a land drop. So it's a, it's a really weird tightrope you've got to walk. But like I said, Innistrad Midnight Hunt will make you feel something. Sometimes it's frustration. Sometimes it's excitement. Like, it, it, it is a format that is full of passion. That's a good way to say it. Would like to play first. And this seems like a good mix. We've got two, three, four. So, this is good news. Ooh. That's awkward, but it is what it is. I don't think they're going to want to trade these. Like, they can exile some stuff, but there's not a lot of stuff they can exile that I care about.
Don't want to trade their rare. I'm hoping that comes back to bite them. Alright, fine. Maybe I'll kill it. Yeah, it's gonna need to die. Let's just accept it and move along. Because it looks like we're getting close to flooding out again, and I do want to start flashing these back. We're getting very close to flooding out. Eating alive this uh, chaplain is pretty appealing now. Because if you eat it alive, there's no ghost. Apparently, that's how that works. We did mill one piece of our card advantage, which is a little disappointing, but it'll be all right. Because we've got this one. So are we definitely Shadow Beast siding this turn? Because I think that might be the plan, and then we can look at Augering. Because Augur would only hit land drops. Uh, currently, we don't have Coven enabled. And there's a, a world where I need to eat alive that chaplain. It's a lot of ritual guardians. All right, with another eaten alive coming, I am interested in doing it, but I can't do it this turn unless I sacrifice something and I don't want to sacrifice something. So we'll eat it alive next turn. Dang it, Bobby, I was using that. Still no attacks just yet. The poor auger didn't even get to do anything. But now Return to Nature is live. So this is probably the trick that gives uh, plus one, plus one. Which I think we play around by doing something like this and just let them have it. I can take eight. And they're two for wanting themselves. So like, I think we're okay with that. Like, they're going to need something else. That's not good enough. We got siege zombies, yo. The only emote I have on this account is the Crying Hedron, and it makes me sad. Boop, boop, boop. Pew! Okay, 
we know what's getting eaten alive. You gotta go. I don't know that there's a lot of value in, in having that in play, but I don't see why not. We need to draw something before they draw their other horse dog, because another horse dog would be a problem. I needed to kill this because at a certain point they would decide to send it in, and I've taken out all of my anti-flyer tag because I didn't really consider this that much of a threat. And as it's played out, I probably would have been happier to to be at a... Well, they might have killed me with the damn thing. Because I, I couldn't have blocked the same way around the Ritual of Hope. Interesting decisions. They've got a silver boat, too. Interesting. I hope I don't get the opportunity to, to use my crying Zendikana mode. That would not be ideal. He's dead, Jim. They should really be attacking me with both of these, but I... Oh, this is so rough. I'm in danger to dying from that silversmith. All right, Deck, I need you to draw something besides the freaking land. This one was not a crazy keep. We've just drawn too many lands. And it sucks. And I'm unhappy. That's what happened. Cool. The auger literally can't save us, but nonetheless, I'm getting my auger back. Just so we can see a card that wouldn't help us. <sighs> sometimes you're the statue and sometimes you're the pigeon. We were certainly the statue in that one. But that is some somewhat the way the cookie crumbles, at least it can be. Yuck. All right, let's try it again. I think we can still do this. Clap your hands if you believe. I believe. I believe in life after love, after love, after love, after love. After love. I believe in long wait times, too, apparently. All right, we've got two, three, four. I can dig it. Got a cantaloper, which is not a card I like very much.
Let's see if it can do some work here, though. All right, get me. I'm hopeful we can start making things happen next turn, but we'll see. Like, I'm pretty far behind already. Because I can't see a reason they block and trade anything, which means this is basically just going to be a 4-3, which is fine. I don't think they have a combat trick, or they might have attacked with that one, too. It'd be nice if it turned it into a zombie or something. Alright, Return to Nature might be something we're interested in again. We can make our first attack, which is pretty cool. I don't know that I can actually beat that. Which, uh... Kind of sucks. I'd like to keep the game going as long as possible, which may not be very long, uh, but we'd like to get an idea of how many other targets they have for the return to nature. Like, I probably still have to play it. Yeah, I would not call this ideal. I imagine they just take literally all of this and then untap and mostly kill me. Yeah, with the lifelinker, that's going to be difficult. They don't actually have anything to bring back, which is like good for us, but we're also kind of just like literally dead. Yeah, it's game over, man. They just equip that to the Avenger. It has flying. We can't block it. We're dead. So we're going to need anti-flyer technology, and we're going to need anti-mask of gristle brand technology. The good news is we have those things. We have anti-flyer technology, and we have mask of gristle brand technology. So I need three cuts out of this deck. Things are getting serious. I'm not going to be combat tricking them. That one's easy. It's a creature, but I don't know why it won't stack there. Our deck just doesn't really have enough to do in the late game, which is unfortunate, but there's not a lot I can do about that. Because I feel like we're looking to block and get stable and then try to stop them. And it kind of has to start there. That, that means I don't need offensive creatures like this. I need defensive ones. Puts us at 14, 15 creatures. I probably don't need either the Duel for Dominance or the Silver Bolt. Like, they're not going to be playing. Yeah, this is just a four mana removal spell. I, I don't need the Silver Bolt. We can do without that. Phew.
doesn't have a lot going for it early. Uh, but unless they have a, a blazing fast start, we'll still get to play some magic. You don't really want the auger to be your first card, but I mean, unless your hand is all lead, in which case it's great. Look at that value. Oh, so much value. We attack next turn and potentially cast the ghoul. If they block. Well, we may need to defenestrate that. We'll see. Let's give him the old swing in. Nothing for him to get back yet. Did I miss a ping on my siege zombie? I think I did. That's not great. Bloody mask of Gristlebrand, eh? Well, that makes it a little easier to stomach eating it alive. What? Excuse me? Praise Banan. I did not. How do you do that at 21 life with a mask in hand? Oh my God. I don't know what just happened, but I'm excited about it. Can you tell? So our sideboard's where I want it. I should probably tell you why I'm excited about it. So, on stream, I made a second account called Draft Hero, which is what I've been using to record these videos. And I used it because they gave you a free draft for three best of one formats. And I was like, you know what? I'll make a second account and see if I can get to Mythic free to play with just those three free drafts that they give you. And turns out I did. That was cool. And then I had the account left over. And it's been incredibly handy to have a second account to record these videos from. Because sometimes when I'm streaming on my main account, I won't be finished with a best of three draft. I'll have like a round left or two rounds left or something. So the second account is really neat to be able to just jump on, do the draft. I usually record these on Thursday mornings uh, and then go back and stream on my regular account. Well, the gym total on the, I've been doing so poorly in Midnight Hunt, only when I'm recording for face-to-face, -face, not your fault, just the way it works that I'm almost out of gems on the second account. And I really want to have the second account because it's so useful. So like I'm invested in winning these matches because I, if I win this one, I've got another draft on the second account, which is great. We'll record on it next week. If I don't, it's probably done. That hand's a little rough, uh, but I think we still try this. We've seen the dangers of flooding out. We may get to see the dangers of not hitting your land drops. I, I hope that we don't. But like one land into farmer should have us like ready for this entirely. I'm now ready for the land. It's not the land, but it's okay. We're going to get stable. Land. I need to land right freaking now. 
Do not sleep on this deck. Yeah, we did it. I'm not pleased. Like I said, you will feel things in Midnight Hunt. You may not like what you feel, but you will feel them. Are you feeling things? Is it too late? I don't think so. I think it's very close to too late. but very close to too light and actually too light for two different things. You've gotta give me that land, yo. Okay. They gave me the land and took away all my card advantage, but if you think about it, that's kind of okay. In a way, not really, sort of, maybe, I don't know. That probably has to go. Cause like, it's gonna be a while before I can catch up to that. I think I'm going to duel it with the zombie token. It, it's basically getting a second copy of Eaten Alive. If I had more time, I'd try to get Coven and make better use out of the card, but I think I'm just happy that the zombie's dead. Now we'll see if we can get an attack next turn and then perhaps get us a ghoul. What did they eat? My auger. That sucks. Rar? Rar. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Cool. Go get them. I need them to want to make the flip happen, not for me to do it for them. Because it'll get to the point where we have to pass again just to flip everything back. All right, now we should be safe to eat that alive. don't have the mana to eat it alive this turn, but I can do it next turn. Or maybe a blocker next turn. River C? Yes, River C.
I don't know why they're scooping so easily, but I like it because as I mentioned, I'm pretty invested in winning this. It'd be super cool to get to win. It's all on the line. And one more match. And we're close. Like if we win that match, because like we got 700 gems, we win the next match, we get a thousand that lets us draft again. And if we're able to do at least one more draft next week, we'll probably complete some of these spells, spells, some of these quests, and that might give us enough gold to do a draft. So like we could get there. We could get there. I'm hungry. I'm going to take a break. For you, no time will pass. You'll just see me reappear and uh, be excited all over again. So I'll be right back. All right, I've had a lovely bowl of soup and I'm feeling great. I hope you enjoyed your lunch or dinner or breakfast or meal or snack, or maybe you didn't even have anything. But we're back and we need to win this to keep the second account going for face-to-face -face drafts. It's all on the line. The stakes have never been higher. You really shouldn't give cows marijuana, but... Hell, maybe you should. Why not? Then you get the highest stakes. Dad jokes. Here we go. Okay, we've got two, three hopes and dreams. Been a lot of Lunark veterans lately. Play this one first, we can play the auger next, and that would allow us to potentially hit a land off the top, which would be swell. There's also a possibility that we want to jam Blood Pact, uh, which I don't think is insane. If I draw a land, I'll play the auger. If I don't, we may think about the Blood Pact. That is a lot of mobs. That is a mob of mobs. Okay, so we could do this and see if there's a land, or we can do this and definitely hit one. I think with the amount of pressure I'm under, it, it's probably reasonable to just draw. If there's a land right on top, it was a mis- Ah, look at me, I'm so smart, oh my God. Now, the survivor I will probably need to kill. But I don't necessarily need to kill her right now. Because it would be swell to get Coven going. Who's a good ghost? I didn't think they were the ones that was going to get value off of my auger, but here we are. I'm pretty interested in trading with this, I think. I can do that. Oh, 
All right, so we do have a removal spell coming up, which is mighty nice. I don't see why I wouldn't just play a 4-4, though, and move along with my life. I guess this one would start the day-night cycle and is still just as good at blocking, so maybe that's why? Okay, let's do that. I got blocks. Ooh, lordy. Okay, that's a good one. Their card advantage is a little bit stronger than mine. Which means we are going to need to start attacking soon. Cursor Surveillance is quite powerful. <laughs> so many mobs! My goodness, I've never seen so many mobs. That's a mob of mobs. So if I could somehow get Coven, I would be able to cast that, but I'm not in a position to get Coven. I think we're in a position to attack, see if they'll trade off some crap to grow these mobs, and then try to kill the mobs. Nope, okay. I guess we'll just keep doing our thing. I've drawn as many cards off of the Augur as they have off the Curse of Surveillance, so I feel like we're kind of doing okay. Got like this chain reaction domino thing going over there with these uh, unruly mobs. Got a combat trick or something, my friend? I don't think I play around the ritual in the blind, although it would wreck me here. What if we played around it like this and just went ahead and took six? Potentially seven, eight, nine, ten. But don't get quite as wrecked. If, I think I like this better. No more of them. Nothing we want to get back, right? Like the hobbling zombie would be okay, but not necessary. I can't believe we've managed to keep pace with the auger. Like just randomly hitting the lands has been great. I don't understand, man. So 
they're splashing for locked in the cemetery and cursed. They may just be playing three colors. I've seen some people doing that. I mean, that's good news for us in, in the keeping the, the dream alive stage. So the Curse of Surveillance and Locked in the Cemetery, we're interested in Return to Nature again. They don't really have the air, whole Air Force thing going. It's mostly just unruly mobs. Rotten Reunion could be okay, but I don't have a lot to do with the tokens. I think this is really the only thing I want. Yeah, I, I don't need to defend the Celestis here. This should be better. Because if I get ahead of them, it's gonna be on, on creature quality, not by putting three counters on, on things. That ain't pretty, but we can take it. It's funny how like two lands is not enough Three lands feels just right, and four is like, am I going to flood? Because I might flood. A victory for Upfish. Uh, that's a taste of best of three drafting for you all. As you can see, my victories were because I'm incredibly skilled and handsome. I don't actually know what happened there, uh, but we'll take it. Uh, it's, it's good to hit the thousand gems and know that I have my second account still here for at least two more drafts. Uh, Cause when I come back and do it again, we should probably be able to hit the gold. So thanks to you guys and gals for tuning in. I'm sorry it was a bit anticlimactic there at the end, uh, but I had a good time. I hope that you enjoyed watching and thank you again to face to face for sponsoring the content. I'll see you next week.